everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. We have a very special event and a very special guest today, and we are going to discuss implementing full stack authentication with OAuth 2 using Spring Security on the backend side. And leave you here a front end expert uh, and a friend of mine, of course, will help us understand how to properly implement the front end side using both Angular and React. Um, Liviu, thank you very much for being here with us today. Um, thank you, thank you, Laurence, for your invitation. I, I, I trust it will be an, an excellent event, and guys, for you here who um, are um, uh, online, uh, live with us, so don't forget that you have a live chat there, so you can ask questions in the live chat directly. Uh, I already see your uh, your messages coming. So whenever you have anything you'd like to discuss about the, the topic we implement today, don't forget about the live chat. Uh, if you are watching the event recorded afterwards, uh, we are still here. Uh, I'm um, keeping an eye on, on all the comments. And of course, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, and let's keep in touch there as well. Uh, so uh, the plan for today, I, I discussed uh, five minutes ago with uh, Liviu, and we thought that's best we start with the backend side, uh, and we will use Spring Security. And for Spring Security, uh, for this part, we will start uh, directly with the new authorization server. Um, that's something that I trust a lot of you want to, to see in action already. Uh, and uh, of course, I will I will implement a, a big part um, of it today. I will explain a big part of it while implementing it today. Uh, but um, I keep a few things uh, for the presentations uh, that I will um, deliver in the next weeks. Uh, one of them, the first one, is um, at um, Barcelona Spring IO. So don't forget to join me for the rest of the details there. Um, so, Livio, should we start with uh, with the implementation today? What do you think? Yeah, let, let's get on to it. So let's get on to it. Um, so what what we are going to do? Maybe maybe it's best, and I will share my screen. Maybe it's best uh, we see on a diagram first um, the uh, idea that we want to implement. Um, and I hope you can see my screen now. I prepared a very very short slide for you. This is not Darth Vader. Um, her name is Patushka. Somebody told me it's Darth Vader. No, it's not Darth Vader. Um, but it's our user. So in the end, what, what you expect to see is the authorization code implemented uh, end to end. The authorization code um, will be implemented with the new authorization code project from Spring Security. And then this is the backend, which in a lot of terminology, we call it a resource server. But just think about it as the backend that um, the client, which will be implemented fully by Liveu with Angular and React, so in two, two different flavors, um, of course, two different clients in the end, there will be two different applications. Uh, the, the final purpose is to actually call an endpoint on the backend side. And it will be a very small, simple endpoint just printing a string. So it's nothing fancy in terms of implementation because we don't care about what, what the endpoint actually does behind the scenes. The part we are interested in understanding today is the full flow of authentication. So I, I would like to make sure that the authentication flow, the grant type that we'll use today, which is also the mostly used one um in applications nowadays uh, is fully understood by everyone so that you know what we are actually trying to implement here in the next couple of hours or so uh and uh, and then start the implementation and then so we have the user uh, or Darth Vader whoever you want to be uh, we have the clients leave you will implement so we, we, any any of the clients will act as what we discuss here now we have the authorization code I will start very soon implementing with the new authorization server uh, project. And we have the resource server that will only expose one very simple endpoint. Um, and that, that's basically it. And how does it, this actually work in, the, in a full flow? So when the, when the user wants to actually access uh, some use case through the client, say in a real application, they want to see some accounts, whatever those are, we don't care. Um, it's something they want to do, and the accounts are somewhere on the server, on the backend side. So the backend keeps them in a database and maybe um, needs to take them from some, somewhere, process them meanwhile, and send them back to, the, to be seen by the users. 
but the client can't directly access at least not not at the very beginning um, the endpoints which we also call resources on the server side uh, the client first needs to get the approval from the user that that it can process the user's data so what does the client do first of all it asks the user to prove who they are so the client redirects the user to a page on the authorization server where they will be asked for their username and password so they their plain credentials a very important thing to observe is that the user introduces the username and the password directly at the authorization server uh, level uh, the, the password and the, the user will never be stored or known by the client. So the applications, the front-end apps, leave you implement, they will not use the uh, user's um, username and password. They, the, the app will never know which are these credentials. The user will directly put them at the authorization server level. Uh, once the user is correctly authenticated, um, the authorization server will redirect back to the client sending a code, which we call the authorization code, therefore the name of the grant type, the authorization code grant type. And then that code will be sent back by the client. The client sends it back to the authorization server to ask for a token, which is the golden key. Uh, the token is the, the, which we also call the access token or ID token in case of open ID connect protocol. Uh, this is the golden key which gives the client access to resources on the server side. So using the access token, um, the client will then be able to access the resources on the backend. So my job now is to implement the authorization server and then implement a very simple resource server exposing a demo endpoint. And then Livius job is to show you how to implement, first of all, an Angular application that somehow gets uh, a token, the golden key from the authorization server, and then calls uh, a demo endpoint. And then um, uh, we'll, uh, uh, Livy will show you how to do that with React as well. So we will learn plenty of things in terms of uh, how to implement stuff, but also how to properly implement them, not only to make them work. And that, that's uh, something I hope will bring you a lot of value. Um, Liv, you, do you have something to add on this diagram? Is it right what I said? Uh, I think so. Uh, the only thing is that uh, for, uh, for some implementations, we will not uh, go through on, on the front end side with uh, all the, um, for instance, challenge and code verifiers token. Uh, we will go with a follow up on uh, afterwards the, uh, the live and uh, we will sh uh, we will give uh, we will give them in an ultimate pr uh, but due to time constraints we will uh, just uh, uh, fo focus on oh, the that's true. That's true. focus on the implementation uh, and uh, on the flow on the exact flow but we will, we will uh, always it. tell you guys what we skip so for example on the backend side just as an example uh, I will definitely skip using a database and dragging the users from a database and I will skip using a fancy password encoder just to make uh, life easier because we don't have all the time in the world, unfortunately. I mean, we can't stay here a full day just implementing this solution. Uh, we want to be ready, say, in a couple of hours. So both the review and I will skip some of the things which we think they are minor, but we will explain why we skip them uh, uh, due to time constraints mainly. And then uh, for some of them, maybe we will also come back with, um, with uh, later on our repository um, with a com uh, uh, completion. So I, I think that's, that's what you want to say, Livio. Yes, cool. thank you. So yeah, that, that's what we'll do. So don't, don't expect now we, we will implement like the really, really full solution because that, that would actually be impossible, at least not in a couple of hours, uh, but, uh, but we will make our best, you understand all the best practices. And when we skip something, you understand uh, that we skipped that on purpose and um, uh, how uh, would that look like in a real world app. So I see a lot of people are now online with us. I don't see any question yet. Uh, I can 
uh, assume that people understood or at least remembered the authorization code run type, and then that we can uh, already create a new project and start our implementation. So um, we have an empty repository now. Um, you will also have access to our empty repository. So here it is. I only have a test uh, test um, uh, file, which is empty. Uh, this is the repo where um, Livy and I will work together now, and it's a public repo, so you have it accessible, you can clone it, and you can use it as well during the presentation and afterwards. Um, and that's why I would like to put uh, both projects I create here, and Livy will also add uh, his projects in this repository, and you can take them and test them later. So, of course, I, I do need to start with the authorization server. Um, and I put it in my right location. I use Java, I use Maven, I use Java 17, which is the latest long-term supported today. And then I do need to add my uh, dependencies. So um, I will add the web dependency because that's a web application what we are creating. It's a backend of a web application still. I do need to add Spring Security. Uh, you see that we don't have yet an authorization server dependency because um, the new authorization server now is at version 023. So my expectation is first time when we will have version one, we will have a dependency called the wealth authorization server here. Um, we don't have that, but we can still use the dependency from Maven until the time when it will be fully supported by Spring. Um, so I will have to add that separately later. What else can I add here. Maybe I will need to use Lombok. That's not mandatory, but it will definitely make my life easier because I will avoid this way writing constructors, getters, and setters at least. So write less code. And in a real world app, I would definitely need to have a database or somewhere my users and client credentials would be stored. But we will skip that. This is the first thing we will skip in terms of time constraints, because if I would now start um, designing a database, implementing the, the repository layer, entities, whatever we use, stuff like that, uh, we will need uh, many hours only for the backend side. And uh, we do want now to show you how to implement both backend and frontend. Uh, so what I will do, I will um, simply put my credentials directly in code, which is something you will never do in a real world application. They will definitely have to come from a database or some other source. Um, but it's something that, that we must do now in our example to, to assure that we have all the, all the time we need. Um, and besides this, I don't think we can add some other, some other stuff here. Let me create a project um, and then which is not part yet of the Spring Boot dependencies is of course the uh, Spring Security Auto Authorization Server, which is no longer experimental. I wanted to show you that um, the authorization server starting with version 0 to 0 uh, is considered production ready. However, the version zero in front is because it's not aligned yet with the spring release um, methodology. So we still wait for that. But theoretically, starting from zero two and now the latest one, which we will use today, zero to three, is production ready and you can use it. Also, one thing that you need to remember is that when you use um, any version starting with zero, which is the only version you have available now, um, if the major version changes here, so if you, if you change to zero three something, between zero three something and zero two something, uh, according to the license um, statement, um, uh, the, the back, backwards compatibility is not assured, it's not, uh, not uh, um, uh, taken care of. Um, so that I will have to copy and use this in my POM XML, and I already have some questions. So after I copy this in my POM XML, I will take them. Let me read. So this is it. And what I'm always doing is I'm making sure my IntelliJ index is correctly. So I'm right clicking on my POM XML, and I don't find the Maven. What happens here? So I see my project looks like it hasn't been indexed, which is 
fortunately a bug in IntelliJ that I have seen before. So I know how to solve it. I will just have to restart IntelliJ for this and it will work. And meanwhile, while IntelliJ restarts and indexes my files, um, I will read the questions. So how to secure reactive web applications uh, for this? Um, why, what do you say, Liviu? Maybe later can we make a similar stream on reactive apps? Because I don't think we, we planned for reactive for today. Uh, it yeah. be too much. But, but it's, a, it's a great Ooh. idea. Um, we side. could sh show that in a separate uh, live. Yes. So uh, by, by the way, Mihir, uh, to answer your question, how to secure, if, if you can't wait for the next live, which we can, we can tell you when will that be actually, uh, chapter 19, if I'm not wrong, from Spring Security in Action teaches you exactly what you need for that, for your question. So chapter 19 is called uh, Spring Security for Reactive Apps, and it's a full chapter in Spring Security in Action, which is a book I wrote uh, about how to secure reactive applications. So you can, you can use that chapter 19. You will also already find from the backend point of view some stuff uh, on, um, on my YouTube channel, but it will not be front-end. So for front-end, we will have to wait for uh, a separate stream with Liviu or some other front-end specialist who can tell you that. I will not be the one who can tell you that because I'm not a front-end expert. Um, so thanks for this live. Can you explain the difference between authentication server and authorization server? So there, there is no such thing as authentication server, actually, Brandon. We have only authorization server, which is actually, it's actually making the authentication um, in um, um, OAuth 2, uh, although it's called the authorization server, and the resource server, which is actually the backend. So there is no such thing as authentication server, at least not in case of OAuth 2 terminology. It's the same on the same server. It is implemented on the backend. So usually uh, they are separate applications, but uh, they can be implemented in the same one as well, because in the end, the authorization server and the resource server, they are actually just uh, responsibilities. If you want to put them in the same application, you can do that. But in a service-oriented uh, system, it's very unlikely you will see that put, uh, you will see those in the same application because it wouldn't make sense. I mean, you do want to separate them for easier scalability uh, to easier usage of, of their responsibilities. Um, and that's why you will mostly see them apart rather than together. Let's say in case of a database implementations in the authorization server for adding users and updating password, uh, looks like an incomplete question, Mohammed. which is your question? You just say in case of a database implementation in the authorization server for adding users and updating password. I don't understand uh, the question. So maybe you can rephrase or complete the question to um, uh, answer it. What type of authorization is this called? Uh, if you... If we discussed about the, the grant type, it's called the authorization code grant type. And what we are using here, what we will actually be using here is OpenID Connect, which is a protocol over the OAuth 2 specification. In this case, the behavior becomes the same as resource server and the authorization server checks the token validity. Uh, okay, Mohammed, I think I understand your question now. So you are asking us if you implement the add of the user in the authorization server, should you also create the, resource, the authorization server as a resource server? This is actually a complicated question, which I will not be able to answer in a couple of minutes. But as an idea, the answer is could be. And the new authorization server will uh, also, from what I know, um, at least it was uh, earlier in, the, in, in plan, will implement also this possibility to treat the authorization server as a resource server and make it validate the JVT. But of course, that's not mandatory because you can implement like it, 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 we, we can't even think of the, the multitude of ways in which you can implement adding the users. So it, it, architecturally speaking, you can find plenty of ways and I don't think it's time is the time to discuss them now because otherwise we won't have time for everything else. Um, okay, good. So now let, let me go back to my project and finally start some implementation. Uh, but my IntelliJ didn't start. How is that even possible? So it was actually 
looking forward for my IntelliJ to start and I don't see it. Okay, finally we have something. And, and then now the indexing is, is being done, which is what we expected. Um, and when, once, once the project uh, finishes to index, I will also make sure that we have the right dependencies and then we can start making the configuration. So that's what we want. Okay, meanwhile, so you say, Zoom when, when you use Microsoft Office, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, so the resource server is the main server, right? Yes, the, the resource server is actually the backend. So we can think as just the backend. Uh, resource server is the terminology, but in the end it's just, just the backend. Um, so this is this is very interesting. Um, I see IntelliJ doesn't see the finally sees it as a Maven project. Wow. Sometimes sometimes IntelliJ is very, very slow, and it's not my computer, I promise you. It just starts to become very slow. Um, cool. Now, now it looks like what we wanted to see, and, and you can see that uh, also the dependency for the new authorization server has been. Uh, found and um, and now we have that dependency. So what we have to do is start with a package of configuration. So I usually call this config. And in the configuration, the first thing we can try implement is the web security config. Uh, this is the configuration. This is the way I usually call the configuration class. Uh, I will add them later on the repo once uh, so no. I will just keep the, this dialog box now. I use the configuration annotation to mark this is a config. And uh, you have to remember that the resource server, um, the, the, the authorization server manages two different kinds of entities. One of them is the users, because in the end, you, you follow, if you followed the diagram, it's actually the user is authenticating, authenticating through the authorization server. So that, that means the authorization server should know the users. And the second kind of entity it manages is the clients. So uh, in the web security config, this is the place where I will um, add the security filter chain. And I will, I, I will put the, everything related to the users here. So I suggest security filter chain, um, I'm not sure. How should we name this? We can just simply call it security filter chain. Uh, we make this a bin and we make sure we inject the HTTP security, which will be given through by the um, by Spring Boot from its from Spring's context. The only thing we need to do here um, for the moment, I guess, is just mention that we are using the form login. So why why do we need to use the form login? Is because is the easiest way to uh, have a login page on our authorization server, uh, since I wouldn't like to at least go now into implementing a React or Angular interface for, uh, uh, for the authorization server as well. So the simplest uh, approach will be just to use the form login here. And I will just make sure that for all the requests, let's say, any request needs to be authenticated and build. Uh, just an addendum from my side. So this uh, this page will not be in a React or Angular application. It will, no, be, it will. It yeah, will exactly. be generated by uh, by the authorization server. Yeah, it's, so it's basically, this, this will, will basically be a spring generated page which can be customized uh, and of course, if you, we would really want, we could implement a React or Angular uh, page for this login, but it doesn't make sense for the, for the moment. Um, so we, we will try to go on the minimum to have the time to, to uh, put everything in place. So the user details service uh, is the second component that we need to implement. And in the user details service, 
this is, as you know, and if you don't know already, then my, my book, Spring Security in Action, will definitely help you. Um, it, this is the, the component that we implement, the contract that we implement for our Spring Security application, whether it is or not an authorization server, uh, to manage the users. So what, I, what I'm going to do for uh, simplicity purposes is just use an in-memory details manager here, and I will have only one in-memory user, but normally we would probably take the users from a database, which would require a bit more implementations, which if you want to uh, learn how to do, you have a, a large, uh, already a large um, playlist on my um, channel uh, about how to how to implement. That. Uh, so let me actually start by creating the user. I will say U1. I will use the user class. Um, we can call our user Bill or Bob or whatever you want. I will use a password. And again, here I will make a small. Um, a small thing that you should not do in a real world app, but for simplicity purposes here, I, I suggest to leave you that we are using the, the no password encoder, which is actually not encoding the password with bcrypt or something else. Mm -hmm. uh, normally in a real world app, we should have used bcrypt or some other uh, way of hashing the password because it's insecure to put passwords uh, in a database in plain text uh, or simply um, just put them on the wire in plain text, so that that should no, no should not happen in a real world app. But in our case, we it would uh, make our lives more difficult here, and we will need more time. So let's keep it with no password decoder. If you also agree, and I will need uh, actually to have. So I see a lot of questions, guys. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I will even be able to to keep in uh, um, in line with all the questions. You you are a lot manier than I thought you will be actually on the stream. So I, I will try to read some of the questions uh, in, in between my implementations and answer them. So you can you can leave them there. Don't, uh, don't hesitate to leave the questions there, but don't expect I will answer immediately to them. Um, and um, okay, what I was doing here, so I was actually implementing uh, a user details service actually on new in-memory user details manager we need here. User details manager. In the in-memory user details manager, we will create, we'll add the user and then we'll return the user details service. And that's, that's simply the simplest user details service you can create, which only has a user in memory normally you would uh, implement one that takes the users from the database. And as we said, uh, using a password encoder, um, which in hashes the password is something that you should do in a real world app. So normally what, what I would do here normally is use uh, return, uh, uh, I know bcrypt password encoder, for example. So bcrypt password encoder would um, hash uh, and expect the passwords to be hashed with bcrypt. Uh, but again, to, to save a, a bit of uh, the lives, um, um, we will use the new no password encoder, which is marked as deprecated because you shouldn't use it. So in a real world app, you shouldn't use it. This is only for demonstrations, okay? So only, only to make our lives easier here and, uh, and save some time. And that I, I think is the first, first uh, configuration class, which only refers to the users. We now have a user. Uh, it, uh, the user has credentials, has an authority, um, and we expect that the authorization server will be able to use the uh, form login. So we'll generate a, a login page. Um, what some of you might not be used with, and for example, if you will read uh, Spring Security in Action, you will see that uh, the HTTP security object it used it's used in a, in a bit of a different way there where we ex extend the web security configurer adapter class uh, just as an idea the web security configurer adapter class becomes deprecated soon so this is the new approach using a bean instead of overriding a method to configure the um, uh, security authorization and authentications uh, configurations. Um, then the, the next thing we need to do is, of course, the authorization server. 
server config. And in the authorization server config, which is another configuration class, uh, we will use, again, a security filter chain. I should name it differently. Did I use the same name here? Okay, let's security authorization server filter chain because if we use the same name then it will uh, it will become a problem and when spring tries to put them in the context you can't have two beans of the same um, with the same name in the spring context um, but but what we will do here so of course again of http security http and what what we will do here we will use a pre-configuration approach from the uh, new authorization server. So if I remember correctly, the auth authorization server configuration now has a method apply def uh, default security, which basically configures everything you need to have configured um, for the authorization server to start with. Uh, so what, what will happen is that at some point, this hopefully will be done directly by Spring Boot. So you will not need to register this bin by yourself. But because the version is now zero point something and the uh, experimental authorization server isn't aligned uh, yet with um, a Spring release, um, probably we won't see this in Spring Boot until we have um, a really um, inline uh, management between the new authorization server and Spring Boot. So that's why we will also make sure this is taken in the correct order with the highest trio uh, using the order, um, how is that actually ordered? I think highest precedence, um, meaning, meaning uh, you will um spring will take this being with higher precedence than this this one which is this will actually be the one uh hopefully part of of spring boot and that you will not have to write by yourself soon um and then again i will have to specify to be sure the form login and build. So that that should be enough um okay so that, that's, that's the first thing. So this is the, the pre-configuration. And now, now, of course, we, we learned earlier that the authorization server manages the users and we know that the authorization server also manages the clients. So the next bin we need to add is the registered client repository, which, which is very, very um, similar to what the user detail service is, but is not for users, it is for clients. So we, you use the register client repository as a contract similar, very similar to, to the user detail service, but instead of managing user credentials, the register client repository manages client credentials. The client is the application or the applications that leave you will later implement. So each application, each client application will need to be registered and known by the authorization server. Otherwise it can't um, uh, it can't use uh, the uh, the authorization server. So register client repository. We make this a bean in the Spring context. Um, and then I will say var register client. For us, it should be only one, I guess it should be enough. So we say registered client. Uh, okay, finally, and say with ID, um, that is something important here to remember is that this ID is not a client ID. So this is just an identifier of the record um, in the authorization server. So that's why I will simply make it a random unique identifier. I could simply put whatever I want there. It doesn't really matter since I will only have one client, but in a real a world application, the client details will also come from a database and they will need to have something that uniquely identifies them. Uh, so um, then, then I need to say the client ID. So the, this is the real ID. This is the ID that um, um, uh, Livius applications will use and we can, can call them client and then secret, the client secret, which I will simply put it secret. Again, 
really these are credentials. They should be somewhere securely sto uh, stored in a database, um, hashed in case of the secret using, for example, bcrypt or something. So the, the way I put them here in memory now, it's only for the example's sake, uh, but simply- I will, uh, I will also add them in memory. So we will both uh, send on this yeah. one. <laughs> Yeah, so I, we, we will tell you where we do something that is fishy, but uh, but remember that in the examples, wh wherever they are, you will find fishy things because otherwise we would have stayed here one day implementing all this. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think at least for me that that's uh, that's really possible. Uh, what do we actually need to configure of the client? I, I think we need to configure at least one scope and, and I'm, I'm going to... Um, use the open id connect scope for this one um i think it was oidc scopes or something like that and we just can use the open id scope so that that's how we tell the authorization server we will use uh, the set of rules designed by the protocol uh, by the open id protocol so you can actually define your own scope here if you want i can define my scope admin or whatever I want. But then I will go on the uh, OAuth 2 specification, uh, but not through the OpenID protocol. So if you want to, to go through the OpenID um, Connect protocol, then it's, it's a must to use one of the scopes from designed by OpenID Connect. That's, that's basically what the OpenID Connect protocol does. Uh, it constrains a bit the OAuth 2 specification. So we, we will go through OpenID Connect. I will just say this client supports OpenID. Um, the authentication method uh, is very important. Uh, usually for, um, for security purposes, uh, we would go here with um, um, uh, client secret basic at least. Uh, of course, we could choose none, which would mean that we send the credentials in plain text, uh, uh, sorry. None, that means we don't use any authentication. I was confusing it uh, with something else. So um, we can we can do that, but I think we can go with basic as well. Do you think it's too much review if we go with basic? No, no, I think it's okay. So let, let's go with basic because that's what you will usually um, use and um, it doesn't, uh, it shouldn't take too much time. Uh, what else do we need? Oh, uh, before the redirect URI, I think it's very important to, to um, define the grant types we, we accept. So the authorization grant type, uh, the authorization code grant type, we said we, we will use it. Uh, if you want to, uh, to have multiple grant types, then you can simply call this method uh, multiple times. So for example, if I want to also have a refresh token there, um, which happens again usually in real world applications and it's the way a uh, client um, uh, refreshes the authorization code, then you need to explicitly add it here. Uh, what else do we need? Do we need a redirect URI? This is basically, this is what you will use, Livio. So uh, I think because you'll be using React. Um, I, I will start to both applications on port 3000. So oh, okay. local, on local. Perfect. That, that was my question, actually. Thank you. So yeah. we, and it's okay if we say just a pass like authorized here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That that's fine. Okay. So that that actually means the uh, when, when when you call the authorization endpoint um, and the user correctly authenticates, um, you will be the the authorization server will redirect back to this uh, URL um, in your application. So you'll probably create a route or something. Yeah. Um, let, let me take some questions because because there are too many now and uh, I will not be able to to handle them anymore if I don't take them now. So I think maybe you can see the questions as well if you go on YouTube uh, and um, in the chat. Um, they are mostly for me for the moment, but I guess at some point they will be for you uh, also when we start implementing your part. Um, so. Okay, I'm going to ski. Thanks, uh, recovering testing. Uh, testing in this part, I don't plan to cover testing, uh, Bernard. So let's uh, let's take it. Let's take testing in a in a separate event. Do you use Eclipse? No, I I I used Eclipse many years ago. 
I do prefer IntelliJ now. Uh, even if it has uh, a few bugs, uh, it's still more comfortable, at least for me. Um, I have a Spring backend service, the tax organization server. I want to integrate with social login. What can I do? So um, actually, for that, you have you have the login part of the, the Spring security dependency, which is a different subject. Uh, but I think it's already treated in one of my security, Spring security playlists where I do integration with GitHub, if I remember correctly. Uh, same as you do with GitHub, you can do with anything that implements the, the OpenID uh, Connect protocol. So you can check that video instead. We won't be doing something like this in this video. Uh, Formal login is not the best type of security. No form login, form login is just an authentication method. It's not either best or not best. It's basically okay. It's very okay to use it. I see no, no problem using form login. Form login is just, in this case, a way in which we expose the user with a form, with username and password, so they are, they are able to put their credentials there. But it's not a problem using that. Uh, I can only get up to 0.1.2 version. Uh, if, you, if you only get up to that, it's most likely you are not using the right group here. Um, so make sure you have the correct group um, and you, you basically take it right from uh, the dependency from Maven. You should be able to use 0 to 3, which is the latest at the moment. Uh, yeah, Ivan tells us later your problem the experimental repo. So if, if this one contains the word experimental, then yes, that's the case. And that's why you can't use more than this. Um, do you have all in your book? No, uh, the neutralization server wasn't even started when I finished uh, writing Spring Security in Action. And I plan to, to write a second edition soon, but I'm still waiting a bit because I would like to have this a major version one before in putting it into a book. Otherwise, I'm afraid that uh, different versions would appear, uh, which might uh, make uh, my, uh, my writing deprecated very fast. And can the new authorization server be used to implement authentication on GitLab or any application compatible with OAuth 2? Um, I think that's on the pipeline. It will be able to use federation. I hope, Brandon, that's what you want to say. It's about federation. Uh, so have a login through login, like you're doing Keycloak uh, through your authorization server up to a, a platform like Facebook and Google. And I know that that's in the plan, but I don't think that's already there in, uh, in this version yet, or at least not from what I lately checked. And that, that, that's all the questions. So let's go back to work, to work because I think uh, otherwise we won't be able to finish this. Uh, so <laughs> um, then at the end, actually, what, what I'm going to do in the end is that I think there are some more things I will have to, to write there. But in the end, what I'm going to do is return a new in-memory registered client repository that contains this client. And again, if you want to implement this through a database, so take this, this information from a database, same as you would do in, with the user details service, like you implement the interface and override this method telling Spring Security how to take the user details by a username. Uh, same you can do with the registered client repository, which is an interface where you do have to implement three methods this time. One is the save one, that allows the authorization server somehow save the client, uh, a find by ID and a find by client ID. So the, remember the difference between the ID and client ID is that the ID is just an identifier at the authorization server side. So it's an internal identifier, while the client ID is an external identifier. This one will be used by uh, Livius application later today. Um, I, I do feel we missed some things here. Um, I'm not sure, let me check, but um, what, what else could we need? So maybe, maybe we would need to, to say a bit about our tokens. So we, we can, for example, configure the token settings. Um, I'm not sure which is the default lifetime, but, uh, but I do prefer to, for, for a demo session to make it as large as possible. So uh, access uh, token, uh, time to leave, uh, ID token, okay, this is the basically in our case the same. I will just make it less 10 hours. So say in our case, 
the access token time to leave is 10 hours, the refresh token time to leave, let's make it also 10 hours. So you can we can reuse it um, as many times as you, we, we want. Um, and another thing you can do is basically customize your, your client, which you do in uh, a similar way, um, where you can, for example, say, um, if you want to, to require or not consent uh, for everything that's excluding open ID, stuff like that. So anything related to the, to the client uh, will be here in the client settings. Uh, I don't know if we miss something, we will add them later. Let's, let's just, uh, just go further for the moment. And uh, there are two more things that we, we want to add. So one of them is the provider settings. So we, we necessarily need, need the provider settings. And the provider settings should also be added as a bin. The provider settings allow us to configure the endpoints um, needed by the authorization server. Now I will simply keep it like this. Like I, I will just create a default provider settings and this will come with some defaults for the endpoints. But if you want using the provider settings, you can literally um, override any of the endpoints for the issuer, for the authorization, for the key set, for the token. So um, if you want to customize that, this is the way in which you customize it. Uh, again, I, I, I do believe that when this will be integrated with Spring Boot, also the provider settings, the default provider settings will anyway be uh, directly provided by, by Spring Boot. So you will not need to put them this way. Uh, and uh, I think the most difficult and important part uh, is um, the key part, which uh, is the last one I would like to, to write. Um, so you, you know that, that when we use uh, JVT tokens, uh, JVT tokens uh, needs to be signed and we can use symmetric or asymmetric keys, but uh, we usually do use asymmetric keys. So that's basically what we will do now as well. I will have to create an RSA key pair and I will instruct my server to use the RSA key pair, which means the authorization server will have a private part that we use to sign the tokens. And we'll also generate the public part that um, the resource server can consume to validate the tokens. So this way we know the tokens haven't been changed meanwhile. Um, so how do we do that? So JWK source is the bin that we need to create. Um, that's, we'll use the uh, security context because it will, it will put in the end, we will need in the end to, to, to uh, somewhere use the security context. Um, and how do we call this? Do we call it JWK source or whatever IntelliJ tells us? Because yeah, the name can be any, so you don't have to have a specific name. Um, and what do we need to do here actually is that we we need an RSA key. So I, I, I need to have, say something like RSA key, um, RSA key is, and then, then I do need to get an RSA key. So I, what I'm usually doing, I do prefer to extract the code that generates the RSA key in a separate class because um, otherwise I, I will see all the code here is very difficult to read. So let me do this uh, the same way I, I prefer. So I just create the package keys here and then we can create a class. Uh, I'm not the wisest name because I, I think we might conflict with something that already exists. So. Let's, let's just name it like this. And then basically we need something like public. Uh, I can make it a bin and inject or I will simply make it a static method here. It's your choice, uh, but I'm not sure what is cleaner, but the idea is that what, what you need is an RSA key in the end. So this RSA key generate RSA 
Oops. E. So let me put a return null for the moment here. And then I'm going back and say, um, my class generate RSA key. So now if, if I have this RSA key, and again, I will go back, I'll have to go back to write the code here. But if I have the RSA key, let's for the moment assume that we have the RSA key, then the next thing is that we can, uh, we can create a key set like this, let's call it set. For this RSA key, and then we can return an implementation of the JW key source, uh, which is very simple to do because uh, if you will go in the um, in the in this interface, you will see it literally only has one method. So that that means it just have to to uh, override one method. You can do that with a lambda function. So I can just say here. Uh, well, I think the first one. Let me see. So the, the first one is the selector, the second one is, is the type, so the second one is the security context. So in that case, uh, I just say this is the, the set and this is the security context, and then J select, yes, set. That, that, that's the way I define the set. So now, now this will be the set that will reflect when I will show you the result of the uh, keys endpoint. I, I will go back to the code at that point and, and remind you that. Uh, and now, of course, that's that's not, it's almost, almost close, but it's, we didn't finish. Uh, we need to uh, actually write the keys. So that means we need to, to key pair generator, let's call it G. And of course, that's for RSA because that that's what we we wanted to do. Um, let's uh, let's use a strong with try catch. And okay, now we do generate a key pair. So this is the key pair. And then from the key pair, I can extract both the public and the private keys, which should be some RSA public key. And that would be from the key pair, get public. And I will need to cast it because, well, we know that, we know that the public key actually implementation we have here is uh, an RSA public key because we selected RSA, but uh, but compile wise, uh, the compiler can't know that, so that's why we need to to cast it. And of course, it, it would be much better. Uh, it's not not really a clean code because I should have used the instance of. But again, I will I will do some some skip overs. Get private here to make uh, to make the to make the things simpler, to make it um, faster, or at least for me faster. So we have RSA key builder, you know, or something like new RSA key builder. If I remember correctly the syntax, um, then it should be the public key, I guess, here. So the first. And then you should give the private key later. Um, I, it will need a key ID as well. So let's generate a random one because I don't think we are really interested which will the value be. And then we can build it. Uh, so throw and then throw new runtime exception here. Um, and I think that should now be it. So the only thing I'm missing here is the course configuration. And I'm pretty sure that we will have a problem with course because um, Livio will, will create its applications running on port 3000, um, as he said earlier. 
uh, and we will have a different port. And even if they are both on local hosts, uh, it will not work. But maybe maybe we we do leave it like this so we can face the problem first, and uh, and then correct it. What do you think, review? So we have the people yeah. seeing problems. That, that would be good to go through it. First, uh, we can uh, leave it with the Corsair, and then we can uh, fix it, and I will take the changes again. Cool. So in that case, let me see if what I did here actually uh, at least works. So <laughs> um, my expectation is that this is the, this is the full implementation um, that should test correctly for, uh, for the, the authorization server then uh, the resource server which is the backend will be very fast to implement fortunately it's much it's a lot less code than than yeah, what we did here um so it started correctly but then i can use a postman to prove that the open id configuration works so we can see localhost 8080 which is actually the application i have i'm having here so uh it returns everything correctly uh, we call the well-known OpenID configuration endpoint where we can see everything that this um, a server supports. We can, can call the key endpoint if we want to see that the key pair works. So this is the RSA key pair that we have registered. Um, and we can, of course, later try to, to implement the full flow um, to see that uh, we can get um, authorized, both authorized and then, then get a token. But let's... let's uh, uh, before that, let's uh, implement the backend as well. So um, the backend meaning the resource server. So we have we have the both applications that we can use to um, to have a complete flow. So then, then what I'm going to do is I will create a separate project, which I will call the resource server. Um, and then I will choose. Java 17. Okay, nothing fancier. I will need, of course, Spring Web. And Spring Security. And the Wealth Resource Server, which is already part of Spring Boot. So that's something we can use. Maybe we will need Lombok. I'm not sure. I. Uh, seem not to have used it in, uh, in the authorization server, even though I added it. And for, for the simplest example, I think this should be enough. So now theoretically we can, um, we can create the app. And I think we said we, we are going to run this on port 9,000 review or what was the plan? Yeah, uh, the other one on 8080 and this one on 9,000. Okay, so I think we already have those. I think this one indexed faster. Okay, yes, it did, fortunately. And we will need to create an endpoint. This is the demo endpoint. The front-end application will try to call. Uh, basically, this will be the one with the better token uh, authentication. This will be authorization, with, yeah. Uh, yeah, with the better token. So, and the only thing that, oh, sorry, the only thing that it, it does, I guess, is just return something like that. That's be enough. Um, and of course, we need now to configure the security part. So that would be uh, config, and then we can call it security config. And then we have the configuration annotation. Um, security filter chain. of HTTP security. And of course we make it a bin. And then 
this one is not a form login. This one is an all to resource server. Um, and we will configure that it uses JVT tokens. And we do configure the key set URI. So the key set URI is precisely this one that we tested earlier that it works with Postman. So this is the key set URI. And I will now I will now put it directly in code, but normally this should be somewhere in the application properties and injected. So guys, don't don't put it in the code like that. Um, then we say and authorize requests. Any request authenticated. So we do only accept authenticated requests. And build. And if you put a return in front of it, it should be just what we need. Cool. So that, that means now we have oh, oh, the exception. Now we have configured everything here. So we have the controller, we have the endpoint, we have the security, uh, the port. We didn't configure the port, did we? So server port 9000, we said, for the resource server, so the backend. Yeah, and I, I, I think the other one starts on 8080 by default. So I oh, think yeah. it's okay to leave it without, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the default port is 8080. For this one, we have to change it, it's 90. And theoretically now, if we start both, uh, we should be able to test that a complete um, authorization flow works. So I'm going to, okay, start this one, then start this one. So observe guys that we, we, we only used the, the new stock. Uh, if you are reading Spring Security in action, you will find the new stock only for the resource server, but for the authorization server, well, as you can see, it's still not version one yet. Uh, it wasn't even started when I when I first time wrote the book. So it says started, um, and I think that should be fine. So let's check if it is or not. And to do that, uh, we will need to first of all call the authorization endpoint. And I prepared here the link for you because it would take me a lot of time to let me put it in a comment here. So, so I, what we have here, this is the authorize, which should be, if we are going back here, should be the same. So it says localhost 8080 to authorize localhost. 8080 allows to authorize. We say response type code because we are using the authorization code run type. Client ID client, which should match the client ID in our application and it matches. So it's, it's basically this one here. Um, scope open ID, redirect URI, Uh, port uh, 3000, you said? Yes. And then authorized? Uh, does it matter that you configured uh, localhost 3000 and here you write, you're writing uh, 137? No, it's, it's, I mean, even if, even if I would put localhost here, which I can, it will still have course problems because the, the course takes also into consideration uh, the port. So um, the only thing that have been different is that um, the, the host is considered different, but even if the host is the same, it, it still doesn't save us from the course configuration. So we can use either uh, the, the IP uh, for local host or local host and it will work uh, the same. Cool, thank you. And then uh, I have a code challenge and a code verifier that I know um, I, I pre-generated and, and I know they work because we are going to use the pixie part. Um, so going back here, if I put this in the browser, 
and then hopefully everything's right. It, sh it should redirect me to the authorization server. It asks me to log in. Uh, it was bill and 12345. Let me check again because I forgot. Uh, bill yeah, one, that's two, it. Five. Okay, yeah, that's it. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I press sign in. And then I'm redirected, which is fine. I'm, I'm re redirected. Um, hopefully it's fine. Um, I wouldn't say it's fine, isn't it? Because I would expect to have been redirected. Um, yeah, I, I think it's not okay because uh, it should be redirected to 3000. Yeah, I, I made a mistake, didn't I? Because this URL here, I'm pretty sure I didn't check. It should be the same in the code. So I changed to localhost here, but I forgot to change in the code, did I or, or didn't? So let me let me make sure I have the correct configuration. So this is HTTP localhost 3000 authorized. <coughs> Sorry, oh, where was it? This one here. No, this looks fine. This looks fine, yeah. Okay. So code challenge. Client ID, open ID, and authorize. I make sure it's the same. Maybe it's something cached or? Could be, we will check, but uh, we should make it work. So let's see. try once more and going here so i it now redirects me directly because i already logged in but the question is why why this is still failing so why what what's happening here what what's missing so what's missing something i i forgot to put in here authorization code hmm Uh, client is the only client scope open ID redirect URI looks fine. Then the code change doesn't really matter for the moment. It will matter only in the token endpoint. And so it tells me a bad request. So it looks like I'm forgetting something here. What, what am I forgetting as a parameter? Can you see something that I'm forgetting leave you here? I'm also looking. Mm. Being um being do you have do you have scope? No, I didn't so first of all scope here. I, I said yeah. I will leave open ID. And then I missed, no, I have the scope. So scope open ID. Response type code, client ID, scope and redirect URI. Okay. Uh, did you write authorize or authorized? Good question. It's correct because I took it with. Uh, that is authorized there, and you have authorized in your browser. I do have it wrong. No, authorized. And in the browser, you have authorized. Ah, okay, oh. no, yeah, that's okay. Okay. See, this is really strange. What am I missing? No, it's not. Uh, it's not that random because it should still redirect me. I know. I know what what, I, what you are saying. I don't have it yet, but it should redirect me to three thousand. So. This is still a problem. It should redirect me and give me the the the, the authorization code. Trust me. So uh, so it is a problem. Um, Maybe grant type. 
to add to the redirect. The grant type is not needed here in the authorized, it's only on the token. Code challenge might be too short. So I, well, I, I did use this code challenge previously. So I don't think it should be a problem with the code challenge. The ground time is not needed because it's the authorized. So it's a response type code here. Hmm. It's very strange, isn't it? I'm, I'm certainly missing. I, I remember when we discussed previously that uh, we had something like grant type authorization code. Yeah, but that's on the token. Oh, on okay. the token point, yeah. not on the authorization point. The only thing I didn't do actually is I'm, I didn't specify the issuer here, but I don't think that should be any problem. Like it should still have a default, isn't it? Yeah, let me try. But I, I really don't know what I might missed here from, uh, from my configuration. Otherwise, we can change to, to your part uh, until I debug this one uh, so that we don't uh, lose a lot of time. What do you think? Yeah, sure. We, we, I can start on while, while you explain the part of Angular, I can debug and then come back and say what, what was wrong. Although I, it's very curious for me because I, I pretty much know. Okay. And then I say it's build and one, two, three, four, five. Nope, still a problem. Okay, let me debug this, leave you. Uh, no problem. I, I can start on the Angular part to uh, debug. So uh, I'll do an initial uh, repository, uh, do the services and some components on Angular. And uh, when you are ready with the URL, maybe we can uh, switch back to you. Right. Okay, so uh, just, just a second, guys. What, what what you will need at some point is me putting this on the report, don't you? Uh, yes, of course. You can push a uh, version now and maybe one at uh, at a later stage, but then that's fine. Oh, did you manage to share your screen? Sorry. Uh, just a second. Right now, I will start sharing my screen. OK, so please lo uh, let me know uh, if it's OK, uh, if everything is OK, and you can see. Um, still my screen is shared, I guess. So maybe I do stop sharing first and then share yours. Okay. I, I, am, I, I am already sharing. I'm not sure if... Well, uh... I can see yours now, yeah. Looking. Okay, thank you. So uh, for today, I will start with uh, an Angular application first and maybe we'll get to React uh, afterwards. Uh, until Laurentiu is uh, done with uh, the, the URL, I, I will do uh, an Angular application. So uh, I'm already on Laurentiu's um, uh, repository and I will make a new Angular app. So I will write ng new uh, o oh, 2 Angular. So this will create, uh, I already have the Angular CLI uh, 13 uh, version um, installed. So this will create uh, an Angular 13 uh, application. Uh, if you don't have the Angular CLI, uh, you can, um, uh, 
you can um, install it by writing uh, npm y uh, space dash g at angular cli i will write it in a second so i'm going to go uh, in the um, in the folder and here you can uh, you can find the angular application so i will just uh, open it with visual studio code Okay, so uh, I was mentioning, I can write this. Uh, so if you want to uh, install the Angular CLI, if you don't have it, npm y minus g at Angular CLI. And if you do want to do this um, via, um, uh, MacBook, you could do a sudo npm y minus g angular cli. I have um, a Windows version, sorry, angular cli. Yeah. So this will install the latest version. If you want to install other versions, you can just uh, type at and the number of the version afterwards. So uh, this is to, to install angular cli and then uh, to start the the project, we will use npm uh, start. Uh, start the project. I'm sorry. I'm assuming you you already uh, are familiar with a bit of front end development and with running npm. So uh, before all of this, <laughs> you should also have Node.js installed and uh, uh, everything. Um, npm start for starting the application. And I will also do a configuration. So on the um, uh, package JSON, so I will have a minus minus port uh, 3000. So this will start my application on the port 3000. Okay, let's, uh, let's start this and confirm npm start. Uh, sorry, I need to go to the Angular. Uh, oh. And I will do an npm start here. Oh, okay, so I already have uh, a port 3000 in place. I will, uh, no, I don't want to use another port. And I will write this command netstat dot uh, dash aon uh, grip 3000. And right now it will give me the port on which the application is running. And I will kill that port uh, via 26628. So if you already have uh, an application running on some port, then maybe it's better to, to kill it. I can also write this, um, not kill, let's say uh, stop previous application and use net stat uh, dash aon grep 3000 and then uh, this will give us the port and then uh, just TSQ, and this is for Windows. I'm not uh, sure what is the command for uh, Linux or Mac, and uh, then uh, port number. So basically port number history will be given by the, the first command. Okay. So uh, let's start again the application, npm start.
So this will um, just start my application and it's running on port 3000. Usually it's running on for, uh, for uh, 4200. The reason why we are doing this is because uh, I want both my applications, my Angular app and my React app to run on the same port. So they are configured on Laurentius server on the same port. So we don't do multiple configurations for multiple clients. We just have one client and we will use them uh, alternatively. Um, right now I don't have any functionality. So let me start with that. So at first I wish to create, um, uh, to generate some uh, components and uh, I, I will generate some components and also a uh, routing. Um, and I wish to start with a um, generate module. Uh, so NGGM and I want to have this as app routing and I want to uh, write that this is for a module app and I want this to be flat because I want to have the app routing in, in the same, uh, in the same uh, folder basically with the app module, but I want the app routing to be tied to the app module such that I can uh, write uh, the routes there. So I will start with this. Okay, so as you can see, uh, uh, my app module has been updated and uh, also the app routing module has been uh, configured. Uh, so I have now here the app routing module inside the app module and in the app routing, I want to use uh, for imports, and I want to say that this is a configuration for, uh, for the route and uh, it's basically for the routing module. And here I will have some app routes. And I will need to import router from Angular router. Okay, but I still don't have the routes so what can I do is create another another folder just to stay clean. So I will create a routes app at routes.ts file. And I want to do a const routes and this will, will be an array of given routes. And then I want to export this um, export default routes. Okay, so uh, basically this will make the, my routes available to the, to the routing module. Let's import them back here. So I want to import routes from app routes. Okay, uh, as app routes, maybe like this. No. I will just use routes here. Okay, and it uh, desires to have, so in the app routes, basically what I want to do is create my uh, my router and I want to, to have a route. And let's say I will have a path for a home page, and I will have a component to be a home component. I will have a path match to be full. So basically when, um, when my uh, application will uh, get on uh, uh, slash home, it will give, uh, it will render my home component. And right now, if I want to do another route, uh, let's say I want to have this configured as my auth route. Meanwhile, I, I managed to find out. So, to find to find out. It. so yeah, it's it's actually, it seems that you can't have indeed the redirect URI with localhost for some reason. I don't know why. 
so it's uh, mandatory to have it as 127.0.0.1. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I have no idea why that is. So nothing was actually wrong in the application. It's just the fact that we use local hosts instead of that. I will do that uh, no, no problem. So um, basically, then uh, I will uh, just uh, complete this, uh, this routing mechanism, and then I will uh, leave uh, the mic back to you, Lawrence, to finish what you've started. Is that OK? Uh, we have to build both, so. <laughs> okay, uh, so as component, uh, auth component, and the path match, which, which will also be full. And I will also want uh, to have a route dedicated uh, for nothing, basically. And I, I, I will say here that I want to be redirected to redirect to, and I want to give it as a north path match full. Okay. Uh, and I also want to have uh, a star path, like for everything else. That would also be redirecting to the auth. So what we will do is basically go through the auth component. Uh, I guess, actually, we, we should have one more, uh, which is on authorized. The one that is coming from Laurentiu, and I want um, I want us to be redirected to the auth. So um, actually, when when Laurentiu will uh, uh, will push the server, then I will uh, uh, redirect, uh, and I will say here to have a route for login. So let's say login. Actually, I don't, I'm not allowed to have a dash there. And uh, then I will want to be redirected to the redirect URL that Laurentiu will uh, provide me with. Uh, and I will not have this at the moment. So what I will do, I will create uh, a button and uh, in that button, I will uh, basically click, click it and it will send me to the redirect screen that uh, Laurentiu will be, uh, has shown. And then when I get back in the application on the authorized, I want to be redirected to my auth component so that I can do the requests uh, for the authorization uh, for the token and then for the uh, for the demo, the, the one with the bearer token authorization. So I will leave this uh, at uh, the moment as it is, and I, I will uh, um, just write a constant here. And redirect to URL, and I will need this URL from Laurentio, and maybe we will then customize it a bit. Uh, Laurentio, I will give you back the, the, the mic. Please continue, because I want to, to research a bit if this is a bug or not from, from, uh, from the new utilization server before. OK, OK, then uh, I will continue a bit. Then um, I will create additional components, as mentioned uh, before. So uh, what is needed now? Let's go back to... Um, to the terminal. So I want to create a, a component, NGG, NGC, um, NGGC, uh, and the name of the component. So I will write auth, and this will create an auth component. And I want to mention that the module, module is also app, so it configures it within my app module. And I also want to create um, a component named home. 
and also to have uh, as module app. Okay, so let me write these uh, in the repository so that you can uh, uh, work with them later if you are not familiar with uh, how uh, Angular creates modules and uh, routing. So just one second in the readme. So in order to create app routing module, and tie it to app module, I will run this command. And then I wish to create other uh, the other components. Create auth component. Okay, and create also the home component. So uh, what this does is basically when you, you say the um, dash dash module flag, it will automatically tie uh, whatever module or component you have created. Minus minus flat is for adding it within the same folder. And uh, the difference is uh, here. So you, th this is a short uh, version for generate module. So the, these are both uh, the same same commands and the same is with uh, generate components same commands okay so you can run either of these okay so now i i should have in my app module my auth and my home component and uh, this is uh, trying to run my uh, my routes configuration for now it, it doesn't work because I, I don't have it full so i am going back to uh, the app routes here and i want i wish to import home component and also uh, i wish to import auth component So uh, this, uh, this will basically complete my, um, my routing. Let's see, it has an issue here. So uh, I should configure an import, but I should also configure an export. And I want to give the router Uh, sorry, this is router module, not router. I don't need router here. Okay. And uh, right now when I start the application uh, in the app HTML, I basically have a default uh, Angular uh, configuration, which I don't want and I don't need. So I I'm just going to write router outlet. And what this does is basically uh, give me a placeholder for uh, each route. So um, this is how the router works. It offers you a placeholder. And when you supply it with the exact route in the application, then it will redirect you to, to the page that you wish to, to have. OK, so uh, let's see what happens. And also, on, uh, I think we need actually one more component. Uh, yes, we, we, we have some questions. Maybe maybe we can answer them if you. Uh, yes, sure. So um, first, I will just take the front end ones. Then I will uh, I will explain the problem um, uh, on the back end side. Um, so uh, please explain why would we need modules in Angular? Um, Angular is. Uh, 
an opinionated framework. Basically, it um, rides on the idea of uh, domain-driven design. It starts from uh, from that idea. It somehow configures your application uh, such that it is easy to uh, structure your application with uh, domain and feature modules, uh, to have uh, shared uh, modules as well. And um, uh, basically, uh, the full extent it, it doesn't use it doesn't use just components. It uses also modules. So modules will be a block of functionality. Uh, that is tying together components, providers, which are also services, and um, other bits of uh, functionality that you can group together and import uh, them as a, as a whole. In a bigger application, you would have um, basically for each section of your application a module, and that module will be imported. Uh, if it's a domain module, probably it will be imported in the app, module and if it's a feature one it will be imported in each domain um, this is why we are uh, need, uh, needing uh, modules because they are uh, ways to tie functionality together that is uh, relying on a certain architecture that uh, angular is opinionated on so you, you can't uh, switch to full functional architecture. You can't um, switch to anything. Angular provides this kind of architecture for you and it's uh, advised to use it. But um, going further, it will help you structure your application, your dependency graph and others. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Cosmin, for, uh, for the Mac uh, command on the... <laughs> um on killing the port uh, that's helpful i will also write it here in uh in the code so i will add it to the readme uh, this is for windows and if i wish to have it as uh, and this is for mac You want uh, me leave it to show now um, the result of the code and then push it to your the repo so that you can download it as well. Um, yes. So I will start my application. Uh, oh, actually, I think it's it was already started. Uh, no. Let me check. Um, let me check the browser. So I don't have anything yet. Uh, routes must have either a path or a matched specifier. Uh, okay, so on the app. I do specify a path match. Uh, the only thing is that I did specify a path uh, match here, matcher. Okay, I, I think I will leave it uh, to you, Laurentiu, and I will uh, I will push it a bit yeah. later. Is that okay? Uh, 
uh, give this to me because uh, I will show um, where I was left. Um, so I can share again my screen now. Uh, I've stopped sharing. Okay. Um, give me just one second because I have to. <laughs> it seems that uh, that my I have to renew my license, so I have to need just a few a few more seconds. If I don't do that, I don't have an IntelliJ, guys. So I'm 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 actually using uh, a license IntelliJ. So I need to to grab the license, and uh, from time to time, um, I'm disconnected from the server, and it expires. Okay, so how do I share my screen for you? Share screen. And then we have this screen. And hopefully you can see my screen now. Can you? Uh, not yet. Uh, th there is a delay between uh, the YouTube and uh... yeah, it's a, it's a small delay. So I, I was actually um, my IntelliJ closed, so I do need to open again my my project. So this is the project, and again, the only thing that actually changed uh, I, it's is the the fact that I didn't use localhost here. So I, I can't explain that, but I will research it further. Um, like why 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 this created an error? Because I, I read your messages, but uh, loopback filter that's not needed. Trust me. Uh, since we use different ports, it shouldn't be any any problem. Um, I, I will check. I will check out why. But the idea is that um, I was actually I I was missing something. I I changed something by the way, but it wasn't relevant. So the fact that I forgot to initialize the key pair. Uh, but that that would have been something I, I will face in the in the token endpoint rather than the authorization endpoint. Uh, so what, what I will check if is this is a problem with the existing authorization server or not. But it's it takes me more time than I I would expect it. So um, for that reason, I will have to. Um, okay, so funny. So it seems now now port eighty eighty remains stuck. Oh, damn, that's probably something that happened when my IntelliJ crashed. So if you know, guys, the command for Windows um, to kill the port. Otherwise, I will simply try to move it to eighty eighty one to make this faster. Yeah, it's um, the one I uh, said earlier. Can give it to you. Sure. 
just the skill and the port number. Uh, yeah, you, you need to run first the netstat dash AON and grab oh. the 8080 and then uh, TS kill the port number that is uh, Is it for Windows or you, you run it from the bash, I guess? It uh, I run it from uh, from the bash, yeah. Okay, then it makes sense. Let me do that as well. Okay. And I guess this is the process number, isn't it? 14912? Uh, yeah, that, that should be it. Okay. Good, that made the magic. Thank you very much. Cool. You're welcome. I, I run it, um, so I run it, now it's working on 8080. I'm going here and I'll simply take again the authorization URL, so it should be 8080. And then I'm using, instead of localhost 127001, and then, then everything is the same. So I didn't change anything, did I? So I still use open ID. I still have the client ID. I still have the response type code. So nothing changed in these regards. And then I, I will use, so it was B with one, two, three, four, five, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, sign in. And the, the difference is that you still see this site can't be reached, but if you if you look now, it did redirect us correctly and it, it gives us the code. So that's what we wanted to see. Now, why didn't this work with, uh, with localhost? Uh, honestly, I can't explain that. So it, uh, it, it doesn't really, really make sense because even if I, I see that some of you, so I'm, I'm reading the comments uh, just to make sure uh, I saw all of them, but I saw some of you thought about um, uh, creating a loop, but that should not be the case since there are different ports. Um, some of you say that you use localhost and it worked for you. I might say that I did previously, maybe in a different version. So it's, it's a bit unclear why only this small detail caused the problem. Uh, or at least for me now, um, it's not something I can um, I can agree. Say enable security annotation recommended. No, it is not recommended. It's actually better if you're not uh, not added unless you want to enable more logs. Um, so yeah, I, I actually think that basically what we did is it's merely the same. Uh, now we we got the code and what we can do is uh, further see if the rest of the stuff is working. So I can take the code. But this time, then I, I actually need to go to a postman, and I will need to to use a, a post uh, for that. Um, and I'm I'm going to take the token endpoint. Like this, and then you see. I I prepared it uh, before just to make it easier for me. I, I see here. Redirect URI is fine, but port should be 3000. Authorization code is the grant type. And then the code is the one that I literally need to check to, to take from, um, from here. So this should be the one I need. And this is usable only once. So if something fails now, we will have to create another one. Then the code verifiers and, you know, authorization i think we chose to use basic auth so uh, yes it should be basic with client and secret in that case uh, which in our case they literally are client and secret so that that should be it so let's let's run this and see what happens 
So four zero on some some something really doesn't want to work today. I'm not sure what exactly, but it seems that uh, that something really really is against us today. Uh, four zero one unauthorized. Why is that? Have no idea. So basic oath client and secret. That's okay. Uh, parameters client redirect URI fine authorized code code which I copied and then code verifier. Hmm. And again, no logs to tell us anything, so. Do I need maybe to, to specify the scope as well as I, and I didn't? It might be scope. Open ID. <clears throat> Otherwise, there's nothing I should have missed. But then I, I do need to regenerate. I do need to regenerate my, uh, my authorization code. So I say port 8080, this should be 3000. Okay, so I get the code and I'm going to Postman and I'm using this code again. Still 401, wow, this is... The only thing that, that could go wrong is the code verifier, but I'm pretty sure this is the good one. I don't see what else can go wrong here. Hmm. It is set as basic auth, right? Yeah, it is. Well, I, I can try without it, but I don't see, I don't see why would that actually be the problem because it's just basic oath, it's nothing special. Hmm. Point and six. I, I I can try now just to see if this is if the problem is from here, but I I, I doubt this. Uh, maybe the scope should be read instead of uh, open IDC open ID. Well, open ID is the scope that I use. Okay, so let's let's actually try again. Go in here and I say eighty eighty, and then I say three thousand here. That should be build one, two, three, four, five, sign in gives me the code and then I'm using the code here and in that case so I, I say no authentication for none still not good so somehow it doesn't like the code verifier now When I when I used this 
Did I specify the code challenge method as 2016 as I did? Pretty strange again. It, it looks like for some reason it doesn't like the code very far, but it's pretty strange. Let's see if someone sees something because I didn't watch the chat. Client secret to no secret. I don't think that's the case. I I I don't think that's the case. But but I, I I'm sure that indeed I'm not using this very often. But I, I don't I don't think this is the case. So it's pretty strange. Uh, and if if that was the case, then it, this would have be a problem. Uh, it would would have worked with none here. So now I don't see any reason why. Okay, guys, I'm trying no secret if you really want, but I doubt this is going to solve anything. So I don't think this is going to solve anything. I know you are you are thinking that we are using here the no password encoder, but still this is strange to I'm going here uh, port 8080, 3000. So we see the challenge, code change method is S256. And then we have build, one, two, three, four, five, sign in. Then I take the code and then I'm going to say basic, you said use no op. And then I'm going to use the proper code. And still 401, I told you it's very unlikely that this is the, the solution, so I don't I don't. I, I don't think this uh, this has something to do with the basic UI. I think this has something to do, as it looks like, uh, to with the with the code verifier and the code challenge. So for me, it looks like more problem with the code verifier and the code challenge uh, than the the HTTP basic. Uh, so I will have to investigate it. So again. <laughs> um, uh, Lorenzo, if you could push your changes so far, maybe. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So let me actually push my changes. I'm going to also delete this test here. Okay, so we can see both projects. I add them. Let's say I'm going to say here backend, and then so you should find them now. Okay, uh, just a second, and I will share also my screen. You want to share your screen, and then I investigate this problem. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, just one second, guys. Okay. 
Okay. So uh, I think now that you should be able to, to see my screen. Um, what I'm going to do, so I've added uh, the, the files here for, uh, for Angular. Uh, in order to start the application, there, there is one more thing, uh, one more thing to do. So after cloning the application, you will need to do an npm install. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, these are the files committed. I will stash them. Uh, I will do a git pull. And uh, then um, th these are basically uh, Laurentius servers and I will add them as well, git stash apply. And I will do a commit as well. Front end Angular. Uh, I'm doing also a push on master here. So now you should be able to, to see what we've done so far on, um, on GitHub. Um, what I've changed here was uh, from route to, to path. This was uh, the actual thing. Um, it, it, the application is running right now. So I'm going to start it, um, start it again and check. Uh, sorry, I need to be in the auth angular application. <coughs> So right before start, you should do an npm install to in order for this to, to work. Okay, and let's let's let us check the browser. So if I'm going to auth um, route, basically this, this works. So what I want to do now is a wrapper service uh, that will be used for HTTP requests and will wrap over um, the HTTP client. This is a, a standard uh, thing in writing Angular applications. So I'm going to write a new uh, to write a new folder which is named services and here i'm going to also write um, <clears throat> a new file which is named uh, http service.ts and uh, in order to create a service in angular you need to decorate it with the at injectable decorator so i'm going to import injectable from angular core and then i'm going to decorate my class with injectable and then export class http service you can also write a service via the um, uh, nggs which will add a service um, class to your uh, application. So you, you can also write it via the CLI. And uh, what I want to do here is create a do post method and a do put, uh, a do get method. I, we won't need um, for today more than uh, post and get. But if you wish to 
create uh, this further, you can do do put, do patch, etc. Okay, and uh, what I want here is to inject my uh, in my constructor. I want to inject private HTTP client. HTTP client. And I want to import this. From Angular common HTTP. So uh, via the HTTP client, we are doing um, HTTP requests in Angular. And I have mentioned that this will be a wrapper over the HTTP requests. So I'm going to write a return on uh, this HTTP client dot post. And I will provide uh why are we doing this is because if we want to do extra configurations that are common to each of the http requests in our application we can add them also here uh you can also add them via an interceptor it's uh, it's your choice when uh, when writing angular but for now we, we are going to use this method uh so basically we i will have an url uh body and uh, I will have some options that I will post here. Um, the URL will be a string. Uh, the body will be of uh, type any, I think it will be an object. And the the, uh, the options, it will be an object that will contain headers. Uh, and it will have HTTP headers. And I will have for now, I will leave it as uh, this. And I will have uh, on the do get only the URL and the options. Okay, so uh, this is it for now for the, this uh, service. In order for this to be uh, used, we are going to provide it to the Angular dependency mechanism via provide it in root. You can also write, uh, you can either write it here or uh, in the app module on the providers, you can write like this HTTP service. It's your, uh, it's your choice. For now, I will leave it as is because it's, uh, it's easier. Uh, and I will also create an auth service. Okay. I forgot one thing. So in the app module, I want to add that imports. I want to also add the HTTP client module because without it, uh, we will receive an error on, uh, on the Angular HTTP mechanism. 
so right now I want to actually, uh, I will use this service in order to create the HTTP request in my auth component. So I will inject uh, in my auth component, I will inject private um, auth, ser auth service. And here, um, so here I will do the get token. Um, so auth service get token. So this will um, do the, H, uh, the HTTP request on getting the token after uh, Laurentiu will be um, uh, finalizing it. Um, we can then pipe and say take one because we just want to unsubscribe automatically after the subscription is made. So without uh, writing uh, alternatively, you can have uh, ng on destroy and write here something like this subscription. Sub screen also subscribe. So the alternative is to push this in uh, in uh, this observable in a subscription like this, and then do an unsubscribe here. But we won't do that. We will use the take one operator right now. And this will terminate uh, the stream of observable uh, after the the first um, the first request is uh, made. So we won't get um, memory leaks. So to not alternatively to not get memory leaks, it's important to unsubscribe you, uh, from your observables in. Um, in your applications. So I'm going to write here, import take from rxjs slash operators. And basically this will give me my um, um, take operator from rxjs. In the get token, I don't have yet a function named get token. We will return an HTTP request and um, we will create this afterwards. Uh, for now, I'm just returning of, and this will give me an empty observable in order not to uh, break my application. So, to be completed after request is finalized. And now to get to the other parts. So when I'm uh, doing, um, when I'm getting in the application, I think I will need another uh, component because I will uh, want to have a login button. So I will create another component via the CLI, NGGC, uh, named login and I want it to be on the module app. So this will be tied to the module app as well. In a bigger application, we would probably have a security, pro uh, security module, which is tied to the application module. Now for, uh, for simplicity, I've just tied all components and all services to the app module, but this is not advised to do. I mean, uh, the, the way to do it is to actually create your um, uh, domain and your feature modules and to separate them accordingly. 
Okay, so uh, I have added uh, the login component here, and here I wish to have a button which says click. And I want to redirect, uh, sorry, it's uh, we have event binding here. I want to bind an event of redirect. And I wish to call it login. And uh, basically what this will do, will do a redirect to, uh, to the URL provided um, by Laurentium. So on the login component, I will have a click method here, uh, redirect, sorry, which is bounded to, uh, to the click event. And I will say window location ref equals um, <clears throat> redirect URL. And I want to import this. And I will say it as a function. I will return it as a function. And I will say redirect URL. Uh, so we are in the login component. I will want to have a constants folder. So constants, and I will say redirect. Okay. And uh, right now I will create a constants folder. And I will uh, instantiate um, Laurentius uh, auth and resource servers. So I want to open a server in IntelliJ IDEA, just a second. Well, that's an idea. Maybe there was nothing wrong lately with uh, the the projects. Uh, it was a wrong URL I, I was using for test, so you can use them as they are. Uh, you can pull if you want. Uh, I just for uh, for easiness, I put the URLs in all the classes, so you can copy paste them from there. Okay. Uh, should I do another pull? Uh, if you want, yes, but it's. Because I, I didn't change any, any code, so it, it was actually working. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, just a second, I will start uh, the new projects. Uh, I see, I see a question meanwhile, uh, is code or code verifier in the request? It's both of them because code is the authorization code and code verifier is from, from the pixie part is the, um, is, is the, the, the information that has been transformed into the challenge. So both of them need to be in the request. My problem was that I used the, actually a different port and it seems that post money told me unauthorized, even though the port was not even open on my computer, which, which made, made the confusion for, for me. So maybe, maybe Lydia, I can show that while you are opening the port. Uh, yes, sure, please. I've um, stopped my... Uh... Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure. So this is where I where I added both uh, both the URLs. Uh, um, I I can restart the application just to to make sure I'm started from the very beginning. And again, I didn't change anything in the code. Um, I will I will just I was just using nine thousand here instead of eighty eighty. And for some reason, uh, post one told me this is unauthorized. But it's strange because the port is not even open on my computer. 
Uh, anyway, so so I can now get the authorization code as expected. So I'm going to my browser. So I'm making sure 8080 and everything is fine. User was Bill, password 12345. And I'm getting the code, which eventually you will process uh, later with you. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the code here, uh, which is the authorization code. So as I said, you have the code and the code verifier. Both of them are essential. So the code verifier is the one that um, that uh, proves that the challenge, that the, the same time that sent, sent the challenge a few um minutes ago uh it's still the same on the same client and the authorization code is the one that proves that the user authenticated so they are two different information even the, if they both start with code and going on the on the diagram so it's basically the challenge uh is to prove that this request is from for the same client and the code is this one that we, we received here that proves that the user authenticated. So that they are, they are two different information that are both mandatory. So if, if they are both correct, then it happens exactly what you see here. So I, I get the correct response and we will be able to use the ID token. And if, if we want, we can take the ID, ID token and, come on, my mouse is not working. Use it for the demo, uh, the uh, demo request, right? I don't know what happens today because it's usually okay. So I, I, I can copy it, say, in JVTIO. <clears throat> okay, we saw this here. And you can see exactly so, bill, client, this is what, what the, the token has been issued for. And if we check, we can prove even that the key ID is the one that we registered in the in the server. We can easily prove that by going in Postman and checking the key send point. And the key send point, this ID C4 something something, C4 A A B should be the same one we see here, C4 A A B. So now it's basically working correctly. What, what happened in my case is that it seems that I forgot here, I was just copy pasting some other link. I forgot 9,000 here. If you do something like this, it, it says 401 authorized, which is strange because I don't even have port 9,000 open on my computer. So that, that's why I got confused. And yeah, anyway, now it's not um... No, it's fine, it's not working because I already used the code. So it's it's normal that second time it gives me invalid grant. Uh, it's because the code can be used only once. So Pixie, yes, it's called Pixie. Uh, that's that's what we, uh, that, that's how we call it. So they did what, we are, what we are using here is indeed the authorization code with Pixie grant type that PKCE, it's called Pixie. Uh, and it's what we are using here. And the fact that's why we are sending, sending a challenge uh, when we make the authorization. So if you go here in the authorization server in my, uh, my comment where I put the URLs I'm using, so you see the authorize sends the challenge, the code challenge, which is basically the uh, SHA-256 encryption of the verifier and the verifier is the one we send here, the code verifier. So that's how it's working because we send the hash here and then the, the server can verify that the information we send now is exactly the one for which we, it receives it received the hash in the authorization in the, in the authorization call. So that's that's the idea. And yes, we, we will implement with Pixie in Angular as well and, uh, and React because otherwise it wouldn't work. So now, otherwise, I think the last, the last thing and hopefully maybe we don't have a problem here as well uh, is that on the resource server side that I started on port 9000, I will start now actually on port 9000.
Okay, so actually that's that's why it was working. So when when my IntelliJ crashed, it remained with four nine thousand open. So that's why Postman said four zero one. Now it makes sense. So what I will do, I will kill this. Um, I will kill this port as well as we did earlier. Hopefully, still have the command here. If not, I will copy it. No, I don't have it, but I can um, I can get it. Maybe I have it here. Okay, no. So I will um, I will simply copy it again from um, from the chat. If I know where the chat is, <laughs> that should be. here first and then nine thousand this time I guess and then it should be one four seven eight eight and hopefully it should start now. And it starts, which is good. So now I can go to Postman. I will have to again get a token because I, I can't do anything without a token first. So let, let me redo, take the authorization, put it in my browser, get the token. I get the code, sorry, the, the authorization code, and then go back to Postman and use again a code, send it, get the ID token. Mind that because we are using Open ID Connect, we don't use the access token, but the ID token. And then I can go in a separate tab and I should be able to say HTTP localhost, uh, 9,000 demo was the end point, was the end point, yes. And then in the headers, I use the authorization header and the prefix bear followed by my ID token. And then of course, now this is a, a proof, uh, a proof up to the end that we can now call the demo endpoint using the token. So. From the backend side, Livy, I think now everything should work correctly. The only thing we are missing, as you know, is um, the course part, but we, we left that on purpose. Okay. So that, that, that should work now for you as well, hopefully. I, uh, I took the latest uh, changes. So mm -hmm. for, for now, maybe we can get uh, back to, to my Angular application. Yes, so please, uh, I will I will stop sharing now because I think I, I finished my part without the mm -hmm. course that we will implement later. Someone asks us where did we get the code challenge? So we, we just created them manually before. Normally, they should be created by the client, which is what Livy implements, but we will skip that today because of time constraints, which by the way, we are all already 30 minutes delayed by what we want it to be. Uh, but the idea is that's very simple, Brandon. So um, it's just you generate a 64, bi a 64 bytes string, random string, and that's the verifier. So it's just a 64 bytes. Did I see correctly? 64 was review, isn't it? Uh, 32. 32, sorry, a, a 32 bytes uh, string, random string. And then that's the verifier and the challenge is the SHA-2064 uh, coding and coding over it. So that, that's how you generate them. So the, the challenge is the uh, SHA-2066 uh, 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 hash over the, the verifier and the verifier is simply a 32 bytes random string. So you, you, what, what happens is that the client simply does that every time uh, it um, it sends a request to the authorized uh, code. It, it generates these two 
and then uses them with the requests as we, we did here. And we, we previously created them to save time. So Liviu, you, you want to continue then? Uh, yes, sure. I will share my screen immediately. Uh, I can actually search for a video where, where I'm uh, creating those um, for the guys to see. Uh, it's already on my channel. So uh, about the challenge and the verifier to be uh, to be more clear for those of you who want to, to check later. Give me one second and I will find it for you. Okay, so uh, Lawrence, you just uh, left me the two uh, the two URLs that I need to use here. the The first one is the uh, author I uh, the authorize uh, link to uh, for me to re redirect to it when logging in, and uh, the other one is for obtaining uh, the token as he as he mentioned. the The third one not mentioned here is the the demo, uh, but we will uh, add that at the end. So um, we will add it in the home component um, afterwards. So I'm just going to copy paste them uh, in my application. So const URL equal, uh, equals, I want it to be a function. It doesn't matter that it's a lambda. And I'm going to break this a bit because uh, it's a bit too large. So, I have the redirect URI here. There's a lot of people interested about also um, the, the other stuff that most likely we won't have time to present. So I think it makes sense to have a second session. Uh, what do you think, Liv, you maybe, maybe- Yeah, that would be nice. In the future too complete with the other questions. So guys, uh, you will see today we, we will provide you with end-to-end -end, uh, authentication implemented, but if you still have questions, uh, don't forget to leave them in the comment section. And uh, if uh, many of you want that, of course, we can create a second session to clarify your, all your questions. Also, um... We can provide with uh, in the in the next session maybe to have a little more uh, <clears throat> developed <coughs> example to apply also some architectural uh, changes because for instance if you would use uh, in the Angular or React application um, you wouldn't uh, write it vanilla like I did so far so the, you would have to uh, have a um, <coughs> um, um, uh, state management solution in place. So uh, I'm writing it here without any state management solution at all. So probably you'd have more uh, a more configured application in in a real example. Uh, so yeah, we could we could do uh, uh, a development on uh, on this side and uh, add all the all the other parts as well. And we do the other way around. We, instead of starting from scratch as we did today, we start from something already and just we fill with what's missing or what's interesting or answer the questions. Sure. Yeah, that... if you don't speak, then it's it's impossible to, to do that in uh, in just one session. Um, maybe to actually start from what we developed here, not to uh, to remove it completely, maybe. Okay, uh, so I uh, did uh, this and I need to export it right now. Export to redirect uh, URL and I want it as, um, as an object. 
Okay. So I was mentioning that in the login component, I uh, want to receive this from my redirect. Cannot find constants redirect. So I have, um, I should have a folder constants and the redirect and here to export it. Maybe I will do it as a default. Okay, and back in my component. Uh, just one second, so redirect URL. Let me try again. Okay, it was uh, with uh, one folder above, sorry. So basically when I, I will click this button, I want uh, that my application to be redirected to the URL provided uh, by Laurentiu, and that would be uh, the redirect to obtain the authorization code. And uh, right now I need to check my, uh, my app routing. Okay, uh, so I'm on uh, login and I don't want it to redirect uh, to, I want it to show component, login component, it already uh, imported. And uh, let's see if I go to my application on slash login. Uh, let's see if the first the application is started. It started again, maybe it uh, has an issue. Also, it says auth, um, auth service. This type does not have a value, so it cannot be used as an injection token. Let, let's check about that. So in the auth component, I'm using auth service, which is declared in auth service. Now it compiled successfully, okay. So uh, right now I will uh, go back to the browser and the uh, issue, uh, go to the login page. So as you can see here, I have a button as I've mentioned and when clicking to it, uh, I am redirected to, to the server provided by, uh, by Laurentiu. I have already specified this, but it uh, didn't, it preserved my log. So, uh, Laurentio, I think it was a bill. Yeah, and one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you are redirected back now. Yes. Okay, so it mentions that I have, uh, I don't want to check passwords. I don't want to save yeah. uh, currently. Because we use one, two, three, four, five, so the boss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I uh, have no provider for auth service in the app module, so let's check that. Uh, in the auth service, I've mentioned, I didn't mention here that I wanted to provide that in root. Okay, so now that error should be uh, done. Okay, and let's uh, let us get so uh, when uh, when on the authentication component, what we wish to do is basically um, take uh, take the 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 routing information, the query parameters, and add uh, the authorization code. Uh, that I receive from uh, from Laurentiu onto the onto the request that I want to make for get token. So um, the the routing should uh, go as follows: app routes on the authorized. I want to be re redirected to uh, to the auth component, and uh, in the auth component, 
I want to have um, so I'm doing already a get token but I, I wish to take first the query parameters so I want to do a private uh, activated to inject the activated route in uh, inside the auth component and this is an activated route and in the constructor um, I will call a method of this get authorization code and let's do this one more uh, here so get authorization code and here i want to use the activated route so this activated route uh, query params subscribe so basically when um, uh, when my query params change i want to take them and assign uh, the um, uh, authorization code on the on the service uh, i won't add it to uh, session storage the authorization code because that needs to be generated each time um, and uh, for for each request for each uh, if, if we want to obtain it uh, it will be uh, uh, rebuilt so to speak so uh, i want to have the code just in mem just an in memory it will be a string and have um, this as a string and i will receive here uh, the params and I want to uh, add on uh, the code of params code. And I will also do a check to defensively add it in case the params don't contain the code. So I don't get an undefined error um, code. Okay. Uh, and let's see if uh, this concludes here. So basically, uh, when I do the login, I want to console log uh, my code to see that I have successfully taken uh, taken it from uh, the redirect URL um, from Laurentio. So this is code equals, okay. And now let's go to the browser. So let's get one more time uh, to the localhost 3000. It uh, redirected me, but it didn't do anything. So I must have an issue with the routing. Okay. I, I, think, I think it's finally it might be because you uh, kept the server open so uh, the server already knows the authentication so if you logged in once you will not need it any to log in again or uh, let, let me try one more time with an incognito or, or that none Login. Okay. And I want a uh, bill and one, two, three, four, five. Yes, I have successfully, uh, you were right, uh, Lorenzo, I have successfully taken the code. Okay. Uh, so this is the code that I will add onto the onto the token request that I will perform next. So uh, basically, on the engine init, I will uh, want to do a, a request here. So bear with uh, bear with me on mocking my client and secret. Please don't do this in your. <laughs> 
uh, I will write it as mock user client So I need to take the uh, also the the URL from um, from constants, and I will uh, write another uh, constant here for token. Uh, I see a question from Brandon. Maybe meanwhile you can also answer that. Um, can we yes. use Angular Auth Open ID Connect client or Angular Auth to OIDC? Do you know what these are? Uh, yes, I think it's a it's a uh, it's a package um, uh, written for Angular for Open ID Connect uh, protocol. Uh, I have used it in a in a previous uh, implementation with a, with a client. Um, it can be used, yes. Uh, I haven't provided any uh, example of usage on, on it, but uh, sure, you can use it. Um, so it, it, is a, it is a recommended, uh, one of the recommended packages to use for OpenID uh, Connect authorization. Um, you should also check uh, the, the versioning. So uh, when I used uh, that package, it, it was Angular, I think, uh, version uh, six or uh, uh, around that. So uh, a few years ago, um, you should also check the versioning on it uh, to, to make sure that uh, it supports uh, the versions and uh, to not have any uh, security uh, issues. So whenever installing uh, packages that are related to security, maybe it would be ideal to actually do an NPM audit uh, beforehand to see that they don't have any uh, issues on this because uh, security is critical in, in this case. Okay, um, so I'm going to take uh, the URL from uh, the server. Just one second. This is the one to get the token. Okay, so I will break this uh, as before. And I will take, I will give it the code as parameter and I will embed here the code. And I will do a return. Okay. And uh, let's uh, let's break this even further. And I want to have this. Okay. And I want to export it as well. I think I have a, yeah. Export default token URL. 
And now let's get back to the auth component. So I want to import token URL from, let's see if it does an automatic import, yes. Okay, so I can use, uh, I can use that here. Okay, and I want to construct a const basic auth. So basically I want to create a string that will contain um, my basic authentication from the client and secret. So I'm going to use mock user client. So this is a uh, user um, uh, com, um, colon mock. user secret. Okay, uh, and we will not know what is buffer. Uh, so in previous implementation, there was this function btoa, which is present on the window, but uh, this is deprecated now. So um, there is a, a package named buffer, which I'm going to install npm e buffer. I'm going to also add it uh, to the readme so that you know that I've installed it. So this is for base 64 encoding. The BTOA function is not used anymore, so I'm suggesting you to use this npm y buffer. Okay, so the package is installed. Uh, let's see in the auth component. Okay, so I have this, I have the redirect uh, URL, so I need to create some options to do to give to my application. So options equals an object that will contain headers. And I want uh, to have const headers equals uh, of new HTTP headers. And this will contain an object with the content type, a content type application JSON. And uh, I will also want to add the authorization. Uh, sorry, not, not in the same uh, one. Maybe to see it like this. And I want to have authorization. And I want to do basic auth. So these are my headers. Headers. The only thing is that I've written this in the component and I want to add it in the service. So I will move to the get token. Um, here, the one that I wanted to complete earlier. So <clears throat> I need to import uh, HTTP headers from Angular common HTTP. So these are my options. And I need to, to inject also the private HTTP service to use HTTP service. So uh, such that I'm able to provide 
the the actual request. So, so what I want to do is this HTTP service, and I want to do a do post, and um, this do post I want to do it to my redirect URL, which I have not imported here, but imported uh, in the component for nothing. Uh, redirect URL, okay. So I want to provide it with the redirect URL. So this will be a function. Then I want to provide it with a body of null because I don't actually give it anything. And the uh, the last thing on the um, on the list would be the headers. So I want to give uh, to give it the headers with my um, uh, auth authorization, basic authorization. So uh, provide uh, options that will have the object headers. And this will basically return an obser observable. And um, when returning an observable, I will be able in the component to actually um, pipe through it. So here, when I do the get token, uh, basically, I will be able to pipe to it, and right now I should receive the the tokens in in this case. Uh, tokens, and if I correctly receive the tokens, and I will have an um, ID token. So maybe we should say that this is as any right now because. We don't yet know the interface of the tokens. And I will say um, <clears throat> that I want on my session storage to store a set item to token ID token. And I want the ID token. If I want to also store the, uh, the um, I'm doing a reflect, uh, I'm doing reflection here to be able to take the ID token. And also if I want to store, for instance, the refresh token, although I'm not going to show that flow, I will also add the refresh token here. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Let's see if we do, if we managed to take the tokens properly. So console log tokens. And now I think Laurentio, if we are correct, it should give us a course request, right? So it should be a course server here. Um, okay. So let's see what uh, what happens token URL and I need to provide it the code. Okay, this is correct. So I'm going back to the auth service. And here I will provide it with this code, the code that I have in uh, yeah. It should not have been added here, but on the service, I'm sorry. So on the on the service, I need to add this, and this should not give an error right now. On the auth component, on the other hand, so this would be this auth service dot code. Yeah, I've made it private. Okay, I will make it public and now it should be fine. So I don't want the redirect URL, but the token URL. Yeah. Okay. So right now it should be compiled. 
token URL of code and I I need to save the file. Maybe we can clear the console just to make sure that we see the only the course when it happens. Sure, just a second. So cannot find name buffer, okay. Uh, I have used buffer here, so I need to import it. Import buffer from buffer. It wasn't automatically imported. Uh, yes, I think I need to do this as to uh, string and base 64. And this should be it. Okay, so I have just code which is implicitly of type any. Token. Code is just type string. Okay. And this is, uh, yeah, this is the course error. Yeah, I think this is a very important one and um, uh, we wanted to to show you explicitly. So I didn't put the, the course uh, configuration on the server side on purpose because I know this problem um, at least creates a lot of questions due, um, among my students. Um, so I think it's important you see how it looks like, so you can identify how course error looks like. You see this course policy there. Um, it simply tells you that uh, one domain cannot access another. And that happens here because the front end runs on a server uh, on port 3000 and the, um, the authorization server as well as the resource server, which is the backend, they, they run on different ports. So when, whenever you have different domains, they are called different origins. It can be either only the port or it can be, for example, both the, the port and the, do, and, and the domain itself. And when something like this happens by default, uh, Spring Security doesn't allow you make the call, doesn't allow the client make the call. So we have to explicitly configure um, course on the backend side uh, to allow for this domain 3000, um, otherwise it will not work. And I, I think for this, I, I should take again the... Um, uh, yes, uh, I will stop sharing now. So let's uh, let's see which changes should we make on the, um, the backend side in Spring Security to allow um, the course. And so I'm, I'm back in, I, I will have to put this in both uh, the resource server and the authorization server because both of them use Spring Security. So they will apply the same kind of policies. Um, and in terms of the authorization server, I will have to add this on both the, the filter for um, the uh, default security configuration as well as the filter that, uh, that I have created here for the form login and the... Um, the authorization rules. So how do we do that? We mainly, let's start from here. We mainly have to use the course method uh, on uh, the HTTP security object. So this course method has a customizer and the customizer allows us to set a course configuration source. So we have to create a course configuration source. Let's call it S from source. And the course configuration source will allow us to change the properties we need. Uh, I cannot call it the same, so let's just make this source. And then, of course, that, that will be to um, set on C configuration source source. So that's in the end what we need. Uh, and here it is. Here we can actually should be able to say um, First of all, I think the origins. Uh, <clears throat> how was that? I think it's 
HTTP origins or something like that. <clears throat> hmm. Allowed something. Mm. Sorry, I kind of forgot a bit how how was that set. So in, in C source, that I should have found find here the oh no, it's it's the course configuration. So it, it has a couple of levels. We need to have the course configuration actually. Course configuration is new course configuration, I think. So it's simply just a bean. And then here you say set allowed. First of all, set allowed credentials true, I guess. And then the origins. Origins. Uh, at some point it worked with a uh, star with the star. I think we should actually just to make sure. Um, I, use think, uh, I think it worked with the redirect URL. It didn't work with the star. I don't know why. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Yeah, so I, we, we should put it like this, I guess. Um, this asks me for a list, so I, I should have a list of. Okay, this list. Of... And then. Uh, is it a difference between one to seven or one and localhost here? Maybe you should add also. Uh, you are right. Here. You're right. I think it makes sense. Uh, I would say no, but uh, but you saw what happened earlier. So uh, yeah, this is what uh, I'm afraid of. I don't love myself anymore. <laughs> I either have to research that uh, a bit more. Uh, anyway, let's put it just the way we used it. So not origin. Sorry, this this set allowed set allowed headers and set allowed methods. So we basically say we allow any HTTP method. We allow any HTTP header and we allow them we allow them to to this origin yeah that that could be the now you say uh course configuration or something like that mm. so it's you just add the the configuration source to the course object I think, and that's it. I don't think it's oh, that's, that's yeah. it. Yeah, because I see that. Sorry, I'm not to my okay. Uh, I, I think you'll have to return. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry, my, my fault. Uh, so the course configuration needs to be returned. So the source creates the course configuration. Hopefully, I set them correctly, and then I return them, and then I set the, the source on the on the um, customizer. This is the customizer here. And now, because I want to use it um, different places, I will just take this code. Uh, and maybe it's it's better if I create a bin like course customizer, something like that. And we have something like public void course customizer of HTTP security. Um, and this is, we can throw further the exception. <clears throat> and that would allow us now to inject it where we need it. That's first of all here. That should be private final Ports customizer. Finally, I get into using Lombok. I added that that dependency, but I, it seems that this is the first time I, I uh, needed at least one annotation from Lombok, so to avoid writing the constructor in this case. Um, and then course customizer for HTTP. And the reason I did that is because now I want to move the same injection also here. And again, we need an all arts constructor. So CSRF is needed in case of OAuth to authentication. Know that one is not a problem because it's automatically set, I think, by the default configuration here. So if you will take a look in the, the, the default the security configuration that we have called here, and I said earlier, it will be um, called by Spring, but it already 
um, it already takes care of uh, ignoring the CSRF for all the endpoints related to the token. So that's why for, for CSRF, we don't need to do anything because it's already done inside this, uh, this method. But for, for course, it's not. So we need to, we need to uh, do it ourselves. So theoretically, that should be it for the authorization server. Let me start it to make sure I didn't make any mistake with the dependency injection. Otherwise, it should work fine when, when I push it. And then I will copy the same code uh, on the, the resource server, which basically needs to needs the same stuff. So we, we need to, to make sure it also allows uh, you to call it. Um, could customizer have been static? Yes, I guess it could have been static as well. Yeah, it could have been. So I just chose to make it a component, but it, it could have been static as well. Um, let me just copy this also now in the resource server. So I'm going to security config. Um, and put it here, something like that. Yeah, we can make it nicer, but let's let's leave it like this. I think it's uh, it's more than fine for the moment, and we can restart to make sure it, it works. <clears throat> and then I will uh, I will just push these changes and hopefully, believe you will be able to use them. So where is this? Uh, the demo link is on uh, 9,000, right? Uh, is yeah, I, the, I the resource server. Resource server should be 9,000. Let me check what I think. Yeah, it is. OK, that's everything I have. And I guess that's it. So back to you, Livio. Okay, uh, thanks. I will take the changes and uh, share my screen. So uh, let's uh, see the console and also uh, I'm going to write like this and get Stash, I want to stash my changes. And um, I want to take Laurentius changes as well. And then git stash apply. Uh, I will do a pop. I will also commit my changes so far. Uh, front end um, authorization code, authorization code, and um, token request. Okay, I did a push as well on the on the master. And uh, now I, I want to, to start um, to, st to restart my, my, my servers bas uh, basically with the new uh, changes. Okay, so applications have restarted successfully. So now let's uh, let's see what uh, happens in uh, in the browser if I get uh, the request. Um, let's go back to localhost three thousand. 
but why is this happening? Because there were no compilation errors before. Um, okay, let me check. So in the app module, I should have both component uh, into the declarations, which is fine. Okay, now it works. I, I think it was uh, just taking uh, some cash. Okay, I wish to go to login. Do a hard refresh on that. So I want to give it a bill. And a one, two, three, four, five. And sign in. And I receive a 401. It is not a course, so it, it's at least it means the course went well. Uh, yes, and the course went uh, fine. Course. The, token, the token seems to, to miss something. Let's check. So on the request headers, I added the basic authorization. Can you take that uh, that basic and put it into a base 64 decoder to make sure that it has the right? Uh... Uh, yes, sure. Uh, okay. should, should there be a space? I don't think no. so. No, I think, uh, I think that's, uh, that's the issue. Uh, let's go back to the auth service. Okay, and here I should remove this space. And let's uh, let's get back to our application. Oh, oh we have the, the the request with the tokens, so we, we are having the tokens. We close. We yeah, we, we we have the token right now, and um, what we need to do next is basically. Uh, so I, I already did. Um, I added the tokens in the auth uh, taken from the auth service in the auth component. Uh, I already added them to the session storage. Uh, so uh, session uh, storage is more recommended than uh, local storage to uh, store sensitive data because uh, the data is cleaned upon um, uh, closing the browser window. Uh, the local storage data is persistent. So if you restart your browser, you'll still have information there. So it's not ideal to, uh, to store into local storage um, uh, sensitive data, but you can always uh, delete this uh, item. So you can uh, de delete uh, the item on ng on destroy so uh, that the, the tokens are removed from, uh, from your browser. Um, this is one aspect. Okay, now let's uh, delete this. Let's also remove this because uh, the observable worked. And now what I want to do is uh, to inject the, the router, private router, And uh, no, not from Express, from Angular router. That's another router I don't know. I took it from Express. Uh, you should be, uh, you should uh, pay a lot of attention when, when doing automatic imports, not take the wrong, um, the wrong, so to speak, uh, in, um, package. What I want to do now is this router navigate. And I want to navigate to, uh, to home because uh, I already uh, authenticated the user 
and I have the tokens and what I want to do now is basically uh, send him to the home of the applica uh, application. Let's write uh, something in the home component. Uh, so I'll just open home component. And here I, I will want to add welcome home and I also want to do a binding on the information that I will take a demo content uh, from the, uh, the resource server. So on the home component, what I want to do is to perform on engine init uh, this uh, get demo information and in this method private get demo information I want to uh, do an, an HTTP request uh, and uh, I will want to co construct the options so options equals headers and here I will have new HTTP headers. This is taken from HT, a common HTTP. And also here I want to add um, the authorization. And in this case, it will be a better uh, token authorization. And I want to create this string of bearer token. So I want to take const token equals uh, session storage. So I'm going to take the, the item from the session storage, which I previously added. Um, and I want to take the ID token. And um, I want to construct the string. So bearer uh, better token equals better space and my token. Okay, and I should have a column there. And besides uh, the headers, I will also want to have a response type. of uh, text plane. And I want uh, to do, uh, I want to inject the HTTP service in the constructor, HTTP service, which is of type HTTP, no, not HTTP headers service. So this is imported correctly. And I want to do this HTTP service dot get, and I want to have the URL um, constants. Let's add a new URL here. Uh, demo HTTP. Uh, this is a string, sorry. One, two, seven, sorry. One, two, seven, uh, zero, zero, one. Uh, it was 9,000, right, Lorenzo? Yes. And a demo. Okay, uh, and I want to export this. Let's name it demo URL so we know what it's about. And in the home component, I want to use demo URL. It automatically imported it uh, for, uh, it didn't import for me and the options. And I want to 
do a pipe as I did previously and also a take one. So I need to import a take from RxJS operators. Okay. And then do a subscribe. Uh, this is a, a function call, so it should be a function call. And um, I want to have a string, which is public to show it in the template demo content. Uh, is of type string and it will be empty as of now, but when I'm doing the, uh, the HTTP request on ng1 init, then I will assign demo content uh, with the content that comes from the request because this is just a plain text. The demo content equals, why doesn't it like, is this an object? I think it takes as default type object. I will have to mention that it's of type string, no? I'm sure this will be of type string. Okay, let, let's uh, let's first see it in action, and then I will assign it to the variable console log content, and uh, let's do the flow one more time. Uh, I will have to log in again. So I'm going on the login and this is my, uh, my string demo. So it's just a, a string. I don't understand why the, this demo content equals content. I hope it doesn't has any. Yes, and I'm able to see the content of my uh, HTTP uh, request with better token inside the template. So basically, if this was a transactions page or any any other resource, uh, we would have seen the page of transactions or uh, the, the dedicated content. So I think uh, the full flow, isn't it? So we we just yes end to end the whole implementation now. There are details we, we didn't show that we would put in a real world app, and that's both back end and front end. But, um, yeah, as we can see, it took us um, three and a half hours to, to complete this exercise, which we thought to, we would be able to complete in a couple, I guess. But, yes, I, I think we, we wouldn't be excellent developers if we wouldn't miss estimations because that, that's a rule in software development. You are you are you are the greatest developer when you don't know how to estimate things. So <laughs> it's a must. Um, cool. It looks really good, and I don't see any questions in the chat. Uh, is there anything else you want to show, Liu? Uh, I would have wanted to show also Flow and React, but I think given the time, that maybe we should do it some other time. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we will demo this uh, next time to also, uh, I will do it on React next time. So we have uh, we have it with both. Uh, the only thing I want to do is to, to push my changes. Uh, I will do that now and then I will stop sharing my uh, my screen and also check if I left any kind of any logs or uh, other uh, console log. No, I think it's fine. So I, I will just uh, 
uh, final changes on demo request. Uh, okay. So guys, don't forget uh, that you can you can anytime get from the uh, repository. It's a public repository, so you can you can get uh, the code and try it yourselves. Uh, if you have questions, leave them in the comments section uh, of this video. Uh, and uh, of course, don't forget to follow us on um, on YouTube, uh, tweet, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, so. And anytime you 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 have something we we have something we we have an event you can see uh, you you, can, you you are the first to to see the event. So I'm I'm a little bit tired. It's uh, it's it's uh, it, it was a long uh, event. Thank you very much, Livio, for uh, for staying that much time and help us with the front end side. I'm Thank you, Lorenzo, for the invitation for your invitation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy that we, we get into some trouble uh, because um, first of all, I, I don't want you guys to think that uh, um, I know we we even with a lot of experience that we have, we don't do, we don't make mistakes. We we do make mistakes, and that uh, uh, that's a proof today that I um, um, I had to, to research a bit uh, and uh, find some solutions for some some uh, things that I uh, didn't clearly know. Um, so that's that's natural. That's normal. Um, and uh, yeah, most uh, most of all, I think, uh, and I hope uh, this uh, this session will be useful for you, and you learn something from from this uh, uh, video. So we are we are looking forward for your questions, um, guys. If no other questions, uh, then thank you again, everyone, uh, for watching us, uh, and hope you have a great time for study further. Cheers. Thank you. Have a nice uh, weekend forward. Bye.